Are you guys ready to do some math? <laughs> do you want to come up here and model some math problems with me? Did any of you feel some sort of sweaty hands and a little bit of anxiety right here when I asked you to come up and demonstrate math? Were you remembering what it was like when you were in school and you just felt so stupid or somebody called you stupid because you couldn't get the right answer the way the teacher wanted you to get the answer and you were really trying? We have a spiraling crisis in this country in math education. It spirals up from kindergarten to college and the higher it goes, the more kids drop out. Some kids don't like math when they hit fractions and decimals. And some kids just get bombarded by X's and Y's and they decide math is not their friend. And some people like me that really like math still get an anxiety when they have to do geometry proofs. So all of us get some math anxiety. And then after a K-12 anxious education, math anxious, the students go to college and they pick majors that don't have very much math. I just want a major that doesn't have math. And then that limits all their careers and all their life options, and it limits our economic well-being as a state of New Mexico. So let me share with you today my 40 plus years of being an educational change agent, determined to make mathematics fun and satisfying for all students. And my team and I have actually done that in different places in the state. We'll talk about a really far south district that we really changed it. And so we've done that. So let me tell you the two secrets that you need to know to change how math education goes in this state and ensure success for all students. The first secret is you have to teach math differently. It can't be taught by people lecturing in front of the room and people memorizing formulas. Kids have to come to understand it. So let's talk about algebra as an example. Since there's many examples I could use in limited time, we'll talk about algebra because it's the greatest greatest uh, block on kids to their future education. And many people teach algebra and then they don't take any more math classes and then they can't take science classes and then they can't be engineers. So let's talk about algebra. If you ask anybody on the street, what is algebra? I guarantee they're going to say solving for x. But what is x sitting there all by itself? It doesn't really mean anything. The core of algebra is understanding how variables change over time. And even little kids know this. If they're making more cookies, they're going to add one amount to the flour and one amount to the sugar, and they're going to make cookies. So they understand related variables. Algebra is as easy as making cookies. And a recipe is an equation. So I'm going to give you another example of teaching math differently. There's a group at New Mexico State called Math Snacks, and we make products called Math Snacks. And Math Snacks are designed not to look like math, but to succeed in teaching math as students use it. The first example is our animation called The Bad Date. It's an animation that teaches you about the ratio of words as people speak them. So in the very first date, it has three dates. In the very first state, in the very first date, the girl is talking and talking and talking and talking and her ratio of words goes way up. And the boy is mumbling a few words. In the second date, the girl is talking and talking, I mean, I mean, the boy is talking and talking and talking and the girl says, oh, I got to get my cell phone. He says, I don't hear it, but he, she has to go get it. In the third date, this is a picture of the perfect date. In the perfect date, these, this couple talks in a ratio of one to one as they use their words. What a great way to learn ratios. Here's another example. Kids can use this game and they know the x and y coordinate when they're finished with it. The x and y coordinate, they can point their little machines on the x and y coordinates and those machines have different ways to kill the gophers that come running in and you've got to kill them and put all the machines there in the right place before, you kill, before they eat the sweating carrot there at the end. So that's mass next. I was in a classroom of a teacher here in Albuquerque uh, about two weeks ago. She's an amazing teacher. Her name is Pam. And Pam invited all of the students that had failed Algebra I or that hated math or that had failed lots of math classes into her one class that she's doing called Algebra I. Now she's succeeding in teaching all these kids Algebra by letting them use visualizations as they do their math. They might be using graph paper, they might be using calculators, they might, sometimes they get to use computers. 
but they do the math together with her. Now, the most important thing about her is how she teaches math, or any subject, because this is good for any subject. She never lectures, she just asks questions, and she asks more questions. And so if stu some student says, I don't know what to do next, she says, well, what do you think you should do next? And if the student still doesn't know, she asks the rest of the class to suggest what that student should do next. So that's the first thing, teaching math differently. The second teacher, the second secret is you have to work with districts so that the districts are all organized together to teach math differently. So in the year 2000, we worked with the Gadsden School District down by the border. And when we started working with that district, they had math achievement scores of 88 out of 89. But they were ready to change. And so we sat down together, some of us researcher people, a lot of administrators and a lot of teachers and even some students, and we decided that we were going to teach math differently so that every student in that district would succeed. I was walking around the district at the time, and when I'd go into a classroom, I'd get really excited because the teacher would say, we're going to teach math next, and the kids would go, yay, we're going to teach math next. And they engaged all the kids in that classroom in math. It wasn't just one person at a time. And that district, after five years, was about 30th in the state. It's still doing really well. And the English language learners in that district are probably the number one English language learners learning math in the state of New Mexico, still, 16 years later. So we have successes in other districts. I work with MC Squared, or Mass, uh, it's called also another name, but MC Squared, and we work all over the district with different districts. And we do have successes sometimes in some places, but we also have failures. And when we have failures, it's because the district isn't ready to or doesn't want to change. And then you can't do anything. The district has to want to change, and everybody in that district has to face the same direction and have the same message. Our kids will succeed at teaching math, and our students will succeed at learning math. So as we move away from just talking about math in lectures, provide engaging real-life problems, and let students do the work of learning, not just the teachers. We will all do math happily. So, I hope that you're ready to think about as teachers, as district people, as parents people, of coming together and joining this revolution to teach math differently so that all students can succeed. I know they can because I've done it with districts and with kids, and you can do it too. Everybody can do it. So would you like to play now and join my revolution to take all the students in New Mexico from where they are now to the best math students in the nation? This talk is in memory of Dr. Kathy Kinzer, one of our core math team that died a few weeks ago.